Good morning. My name is Al Kleinberger, and I'm from Khishtil Nurseries in Israel. Israel's uh, roots lies back 6,000 years ago, or 6,000 years in the history. So don't get nervous. I'm not going to speak about 6,000 6, years of plant history. But the importance of uh, sticking as it roots in stock plants. And so please bear with me as we first travel back to the roots of success, the mother plant and the importance of the beginning of sticking. If we understand the roots of the bases, we will clearly see the benefits. This is a picture of one of our uh, facilities in the foreground in a fuller nursery where, the, where we produce the stock plants. And in the background, you can see Mount Tavor, which is near Nazareth Hills. Our company speak experience is very wide and covers a multitude of products with over 40 years of experience. Actually, this year we have our 40 years anniversary. And almost uh, 400 employees produce over half a billion plants annually. And we have experience not only in flowers, but also in ve vegetables and herbs. So with 45 acres, greenhouses in five produ production si uh, centers, Ishtil is by far the largest producer in Israel. And our international activities extend behind our borders where we have joint venture in Greece, Turkey, Italy, South Africa, recently Spain, and several other countries. As I already mentioned before, a mother plant in the, is a main source for successful rooting. And I hope that by the time I, I will finish my presentation, you'll be convinced that the statement is the basis of, for this quality of the end product. Now what influence rooting quality? Well, quality is definitely our end objective. Quality is what we want to achieve. But the roots of the quality lie in three areas. The first one is the mother stock plants. Without proper mother stock plant, I'm simply tying my hand behind my back, and people already talked about it yesterday. The second factor is a cold storage chain, CSC, later on. And without cold storage chain or good cold storage chain, I'm tying my other hand behind my back. And without rooting fertilities, good rooting facilities, I have no foundation for achieving my goal of quality. So simply put, with both hands tied and no solid roots, I have no chance to achieve my goals of attaining quality. And the requirements to achieve successful rooting, we need high quality mother stock. To get a high quality mother stock, we need all kinds of uh, uh, control system or control uh, devices that will help us to achieve this uh, quality, like shading control, temperature region, photo photoperiodic implement, agrotechnical application, and protected greenhouses. Using the IP uh, insect proof greenhouse, we can uh, also control the insect from entering our facilities. This is an example of a, a small and simple a unit for monitoring. And here we monitor every day the uh, water quality or the water is sea level, pH level, what comes in the pots and what goes out from the pots. So we know and monitor on a irrigation daily basis uh, every time we irrigate. So we know where we stand. We believe that stock from open <coughs> fields or from last year's material should not be used. This is why we use clean material 
and we renew it every year. It is essential to use clean and fresh material for routing purposes in order to achieve a good quality of product. There is not much effort to explain the need uh, for clean propagation material. I will show you two uh, examples of diseases that change the history of our production. The damage caused to the industry by the TMV was extremely high. This is a, a picture taken from a, a Surfinia affected, infected variety of plants, uh, which was a disease about uh, uh, 30 years ago that uh, changed completely the, the, our industry of soft cuttings. A global mass production of unrooted cuttings and cutting the stock plants time after time could cause the plants to be exhausted and weak. This is an example of Rhinostonia infected uh, geranium imported to uh, USA about 20 years ago. And this, this is an example of getting diseases into the country uh, and example, a good example of why you should get a clean material uh, in order to avoid such cases. Clean propagation material in the production chain that start with the young plant product to the grower, retailer, and customer is essential. In the reality of the increasing demand for global quality, together with the fast movement of propagation material around the world, the main competing possibilities are with prevention. So a disease-free material becomes a must. Now what does it mean, clean material? Today, as we are producing a young plant in our global planet, a certified standard is a critical method in order to assure clean material. So we have uh, people outside of our uh, greenhouse or about, uh, out of our business coming to check whether we are operating according to the standards we have applied. Now everybody talks about being clean. People talked yesterday about hygiene. It's trivial, but our industry need more disease-free material. Now, tissue culture does not mean that it's clean. It can be from tissue culture, and it can be affected or infected by viruses. So we need a certified standard. What are standards all about? Talking about complete transparency. Does that mean that you cannot trust the cat to catch or to watch the cream? Certified standard is the basis for trust and transparency. In God we trust, and the other we have to check. So I showed you previously the, the petunia disease, uh, virus disease, and this is when NACT uh, uh, in uh, Holland, in Netherlands, established the elite standard about 20 years ago, which means that a nuclear stock get clean, checked, proven as clean of viruses, or all other diseases, and then you get it with the signature that it's clean. So we adapt this uh, uh, standard, and we get elite material every year for many varieties. Those varieties that we believe that they are dangerous, like perennials. But we have other standards. We're working according to Global Gap, GSPP, which is uh, producing uh, uh, clean seeds for the tomato and, uh, industry. We are working according to ISO system, and we have separately organic plant production, whether it's stock plants or rooted uh, plugs. We work according to the Israeli standard and the USDA organic standard. And standard means that we say what we do, but not only that, we do what we say. And we are using our ISO system to, as a platform to manage and control all our standards on basically all our activities. Okay, so let's start with the cold storage chain. I mean, we have good production and we start to harvest. This is an example which uh, rooted the, of the stock plants. Those are salvia pots and people are harvesting uh, the cuttings. Starting this point, we start the race to maintain turgo. 
We do a visual check just before we take the cuttings to see that the cuttings are fully too good. I mean, we are in a hot climate and sometimes if the pots were not irrigated before that, you come in the morning and they look like they lost their togo, and this is when we cannot harvest. So must be a turbid cutting. We have to check the climate very constantly. If it's a cold weather below 25 degrees or below 20 degrees, let's say winter time, we can take the cutting every 15 minutes to the cold chamber. If it's hotter than that, up until 30 degrees, every five minutes we take the cuttings into the cooling chamber. And if it's above 30 degrees, we stop harvesting. Doing that, we found improvement in the quality because we didn't cut very hot cuttings and put them and get them black. Okay, so we have the cuttings. Where we will put them? We put them in a cooler room, four to six degrees, most of varieties can be in that uh, temperature. Know that some varieties do suffer from this temperature. Uh, let's say basil suffer if it's below 10 degrees. Connect your uh, room to alarms and know and check constantly that it is four to six degrees or whatever you decide and not less or higher than that. Control the climate, cellular, PC devices, all kinds of alarms that you can uh, see and check. Before we pack them and we send them to you, we have to put them in boxes. What is the right temperature in the box? So obviously it will be four to six degrees. This is what we want to get. And include ice packs during the summer. And it should be kept in that temperature all the way to you. This is an example of I expect that being cooled to minus 35 degrees and doing that, the plant got burned. And this is an example of plants that were near the ice packs just here. So we start to check and build departments and to separate the ice packs from the cuttings. So now we use this box to prevent the ice pack to touch the cuttings. Once we start the transport to do it as quickly as possible to get it to you. So we take a cool truck, six degrees, to the airport. We try to keep it in the airport. It's not always possible at the same temperature. If it's a long uh, ride, let's say to the uh, United States, we even replace the ice packs. And very occasionally we put a data logger inside the ice pack, uh, inside the boxes and ask them to get it back to us so we can monitor and see the whole transport condition. <coughs> now when you get the, the unrooted cutting, we ask you to keep them in the same temperature of cold, four to six degrees, and start your checklist. Once you root them, you root, start to root the cuttings. Control also where you are doing the rooting process. If it's too hot, the plant or the cutting just lose their turgidity. And water the cuttings as fast as possible just before you put them in the place that you want to root them. Spray them with a fine mist and help them to get to get back. By doing that, from taking the cutting at the stock plants until you root them, we believe that the race to maintain Turgo achieved. Routing facilities. It's a picture from our facility in Israel, in Afula. Uh, you, see, you can see all the benches and the, the roof is covered with plastic. You can see on the left side a bed which we use for a hot climate. We irrigate it or we get it wet and we pull the air through it. So the air goes inside cool the temperature so the house will be or the environment will be cooler. Sometimes we get 10 degrees less than outside. In the rooting area, we have to monitor three main things. Environment condition, irrigation system, and water quality. We heat the soil to 22, 24 degrees, and we are trying to get uniform cuttings. Doing that, we have to 
check that what we want to do, we get it. We did an uh, infrared check. Those are the trays in the bench with the cuttings. And this is the infrared picture. And you can see the coal area on, on the... This is the bed itself. And those are hot spots. It means that there are some differences uh, in, in the bed itself. And this is not good example. I mean, it's a good example to, so, to show you that it's not good doing that. <laughs> I mean, now monitoring. If you want to get 22 or 24 degrees, how, how do you check it? I mean, putting sensor is, is not enough. You have to put it in the right way. Otherwise, it will read, but it won't give you accurate reading. What we do is put the sensor on the same place where the soil is going to be, or the rooted cutting will going to be on the same position. And this is where we know that what we checked is what we get. We control air humidity. We control air temperature. Now about misting. We use mist. It does not mean that everybody should do the same. I mean, you have to know your facilities and adapt what you are doing to what suits you. But this is what we do. We do mist or fine drops on the leaves. So it's the drop size. You can get sprinklers uh, uh, giving 20 liter per hour, 40 liter per hour. The mist will be, the drops will be much heavier and you have to adjust to what you do. If you irrigate too much, maybe some leaching can go out from the leaves. You have to get uniformity. So that give you two examples of sprinklers. This is uh, one kind of sprinkler. This, those are the sprinklers or the misting that we are using, 40 liter per hour, fine mist. And the, if you look at it, at it while it's working, you can see like a white cloud going down on the leaves and give them very uniform watering. Water quality. When I uh, started to work in Hishtil about 13 years ago, we used our raw water for irrigation starting from start until the end. And some varieties we see uh, it was not going well. Lavendula, for example, I believe that we lost uh, more than 30%. And we found out that high sea level, 1.1, even sometimes we get 1.3, is too high for some varieties, especially because of high sodium in the water. So again, you have to check to know what you are using. I mean, some people here use very uh, high sea uh, water with a very high uh, calcium inside. If it works, okay, then okay. If it doesn't work, then you have to check for other alternatives. And this is an example of uh, lavendula that grows under tap water or high, high sea water. And this is an example of the same cuttings that were grown under reverse osmosis water. And what we got is black tips on the raw water. So we did a trial comparing those two sources, and this was the result. High sodium level, or IC level, and reverse osmosis water. It's, this is a result of a trial I did with Professor Yossi Rive from the Rehovot uh, Agriculture uh, Department in Israel. And uh, comparing two source water was containing 40 ppm sodium, 200 ppm sodium, and comparing the uh, sodium percentage elevation in the rooting itself, or in the root itself, while rooting it. I mean, this is the result after nine days. And you see that already after, let's say, two days, the more salty water caused the plant to absorb more sodium which is trivial if you think that we cut the plant from the roots, no barriers, so everything that goes into the, root, into the cutting, it's what inside the water. So high sodium, high sodium content in the leaves. We did another check with four varieties, different varieties. Tomato, Gypsophilia, Hitcoat, which is Angustifolia variety, and Lavender Madrid, which is Stokas variety. And I took out all the um, bars so we can see the, the more clear the difference. And you can see that Lavender Hitcoat or 
basically angustifolia varieties are much more sensitive to uh, calcium, to sodium uh, uh, content in the water. They absorb much more sodium while rooting. And even after that, I mean, what we saw before was nine days, uh, but it's different experiment here it so more than 10 times than the beginning and it keeps on doing that even after two weeks it's already have roots but still the roots are not uh, uh, good enough and stable enough so this is a comparison to uh, water levels so this this is the difference between the raw water and the reverse osmosis water very low you see uh, almost no sodium and less calcium of course so Let's go back to rooting. We divide the rooting for to four stages. Now we have to prepare just before we do everything in order to have a successful rooting. So we do. We start with a checklist. How many cuttings you got per bag? I mean, did you get what you want or what you order? If something went wrong, just write it down and inform us. Any physical damage, boxes or cutting? What is the quality of the cuttings? Are, are they what you expected? Are they uniform? Have any flowering issues which might influence the rooting process? And in total, does it match your specification? We have our, our own specification, but doesn't mean that this is what you want. You, if not, you have to inform us. This is an example just about mint quality that we got from one customer. And this is example better example of what we would like to get, I mean, now we know that those are the cuttings that decline. Are there any damages on the cuttings? Are they free from diseases? If something is not acceptable, you have to write it down and inform us. Otherwise, we won't know and we think that everything is okay. If you do complain, specify as many details as possible. Okay, we talked about the number of the picker. Pictures will be very helpful. This is an example for a form, but it doesn't mean that this is the one you have to do. This is a priority list that we have in our own routing facility. Uh, immediate routing up to five days and do not root before three days and even <coughs> nine days are okay. The lavendulas are more. Do not root too deep, otherwise the roots will start to force on the third lower part and the, you lose this volume. This is an example of bed uh, lipia cuttings and what was happened that people the pickers just hold it too tight it became hot and this is the result do we have to apply hormones people talked about it earlier we even found that some varieties adding hormones is not bad not good for them it did harm so what are the four stages that i was talking about earlier First stage is getting turgo back. Second one is root formation. Root development. And the last one, finish product or ready plug for transport. I'm going to give you an example, a brief example on uh, Lavendula uh, heat coat growing chart. I'm not going to pass into details. You can always see it in the PowerPoint that you will get. But this is the scheme. This is how we believe it should work. And we check that it's working according to that scheme. If it doesn't, then we check what happened. I mean, did we maintain Turgid for two or three days? Is this the uh, day? Sorry, the, the light intensity, maximum 200 watt per square meter in the first stage. Media temperature, night temperature, humidity, irrigation, all the way until the finished product. You see pH, diseases, everything involved, so you can get those in stage two, stage three, and the finished product. And this is the standard of our plants or our plugs. The same thing with rosemary, which is a very common herb in big numbers. We have the same scheme. I'm not going to show it. 
but this is the same uh, procedure that we have, and you can go get this information if someone if someone wants it, I can send it to you. This is the packing area or the cooled room just before delivery, just before loading to the truck. So we start in the glass house into the cooling into the room packing room, cold storage into the train. So the keys that we believe for good, successful routing it will be like a, a summary of the complete a cycle to bring life and maturity to our plants. This is the issue is giving roots as it roots in several issues. As we say, preparation is a very important thing. So starting from a clean certified stock, routing facilities, monitoring everything, heat, moisture, water, all the variables, and not only controlling them, but maintaining them is important. And the last thing is clean structure for workers in every, is very important, whether it be ISO or other uh, written standards that will maintain uniformity and production. And very important thing, attention to detail, attitude. I took today the cycle of the lavendula and rosemarine only because it, I felt that it would be easier to make my point using those two plants rather than several. If you need any more growing chart or additional information, I'll be happy to provide it.